Hello everybody, Bill Thornton, SoCal Saber. Thank you for stopping by for this week's version of Spinning. What did I listen to this week from my collection? Uh, vinyl, CDs, or both. Maybe I wonder if there's going to be a surprise for you. But when we get going here, don't hesitate to, you know, put some remarks down there. Uh, if, you, if you like one, if you've got one of the albums or CDs that I present today, let me know. Uh, if not, just let me know what's your favorite, uh, what you listened to this week and what your favorite was. I'd like to hear from you and I will get back to you. So let's get going. With the first album I listened to this week is the 1966 album. 1986, excuse me. 86. Can't even read right. <clears throat> the best of Warren Zevon. This is a compilation and it covers the first four studio albums with Asylum Records. It was Zevon earned Zevon the second and final RAA certification of his career, going gold in February of 87. <clears throat> this is the first thing that I have in my collection from Warren Zevon. As you can see how well this cover is in shape. This was part of that 1980s collection that I had been on and brought in a while back ago. That's the inner sleeve right here. That guy that took care of that in the 80s collection was really good. And then we got it on the Asylum Records label. In the final is in really good shape. Check that out. No scuffs. No crap. No lines. Beautiful. Really nice addition to my collection, considering I don't have any Warren Zevon in my collection. Don't know why. So there's a few things that were happening in the 80s and I guess in the late 70s that I just can't remember why I didn't get some of the things that I get. Uh, do you have any Warren Zevon? All right. Next, I listened to was, <clears throat> let me uh, get the right one up here. That I'm going to be looking at. This is the 1983 album by Styx. Kilroy was here. Pretty good shape. We've got a little wear on the side and then the corners. It is a gatefold. Nice inserts. Is in really good shape too. <clears throat> I don't know if it came from that 80s collection that I was bidding on or not, but it is, it is really in good shape. And it's uh, got the uh, Kilroy Was Here album or label on it. This I have some uh, fond memories of. The big smash hit on this one, Mr. Roboto. See, it was in pretty good shape. I was the uh, director of a group and shenanigans youth theater group called the travel group that used to go around and travel throughout california northern mexico they've been to nevada performing in the year that we were doing the we were doing this mr roboto song so i taught them about the meaning of it because it is based on a rock opera and it's based in the days where rock and roll was banned this was the whole story this is a concept album what band? And Mr. Roboto was put in jail for putting in rock and roll. So they got the machines to help him escape and try to get rock and roll released again again. Pretty cool story about it. Check it out. 
That was Styx. Kilroy was here from 1983. Wow, okay. I'm going to continue on here. But before we do, you know, if you haven't done so yet, please hit that like button down there. It helps the channel grow. And subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, that helps the channel grow, and so do comments. I appreciate it very much. The next uh, album is one that I picked up locally from uh, uh, Wisecrack Records. You know, I said I was out there and I couldn't find anything. I normally only buy new stuff from them, and I couldn't find anything new that was calling my name out. So I decided, well, you know, I do all this whatnot purchases, and Wisecrack has a lot of use or secondhand used records. So let me give them a try. So I bought three of them. This is the first one that I'm going to listen that I listen to, and I I base because you know you can't pull out an album in the in the record store and look at the quality of it. So what I did is I based my collections on the quality of the gatefold. Okay, this is the 1980 uh, best called Deepest Purple. The best hits of Deep Purple. It, uh, and, it features, uh, and it features the original hits of Deep Purple before their 1984 reunion. And aided by an advertising ca campaign, it became Purple's third UK number one album in 1984. And it played very, very nicely. No inner, unfortunately, with this one. Does have did come with a, pa a paper sleeve, but is a vinyl um, polyline. And it was in really good shape. I didn't see any scuff marks, any scratches, or nothing on it. So my test um, paid off on the first one of weighing the album of the. the the status of the cover as to the album. So that one worked out. That was Deepest Purple. The very best of Deep Purple from 1980. And then uh, we want, uh, I got this, this next one here is an EP. I, and I don't remember when I got it. I must have got it I what whatnot because it must have been in like a bundle because I, I, I probably most likely would not have bought it otherwise and uh this is an ep and it's called reason for the season by striper okay and there you know it was released in 84 as part of their album three songs from the american christian metal group and uh the reason for the season that they say captures the es essence of christmas and reminds us of the true meaning behind the holiday I never had, I don't know if I've ever had a uh, religious-based group, like Christian group in my collection either, but I do now. It's an AP. It has Reason for the Season on side one, Reason for the Season and Winter Wonderland on side two on Enigma Records. It played fine. Probably will only play it again during the holiday season if I remember that I even have it. Okay, and it was in very, very good shape, as you can see. A little dust there on that side there from something that blew on it. So that was the EP, Reason for the Season, by Striper. In, uh, what the heck did I say that, what year that was? 1985. So... Normally, I don't go into uh, uh, CDs this early, but it was Wednesday night. I had just done a long day of Superstar Baseball, and I just really didn't feel like watching TV. I didn't feel like doing any gaming tests associated with any games. And so what I want to listen to. So what I picked out <clears throat> was a CD that I picked up in uh, 19 or 2023. Okay, and it was I-O, the 
computer system by Peter Gabriel. I had listened when I bought this. It came in the set. It had three. It had what's called the light mix, the dark mix, and then there's a, another mix in here that includes a part. I think Blu-ray. I haven't watched this. Well, when I first bought this last year, I listened to the light mix. And so I wanted to listen to the dark mix, which I did. Uh, and I did when I did a little research on it, I find out that Peter Gabriel, when he was when they, when they were making this album, had two different engineers creating tracks for the album. And at the end, instead of deciding which one of them would go, he would use for the album, and he says, "Well, why not? We got two different mixes. Let's put them both out." So they were originally released as individual. LPs, the bright side, the dark side. Well, I didn't want to go that costly, so I picked up this CD at that time, which included both of them, plus some extra stuff on there. This was his first album of new material in over 21 years since Up was made in 2002. That was a, a marketing the longest gap between two studio albums in his solo career. Do I like this? I had a very relaxing night. I listened. I took my, my comfortable chair. I didn't have no book I wasn't reading. I didn't have no TV on or nothing. I just enjoyed the music, and I enjoyed it a lot. I'm glad I thought about listening to this again. That was I Slash O by Peter Gabriel from 2023. All right. Pretty nice there, folks. Any of you like Peter Gabriel? Do you have this one that he put out last year? I have a few other things by Peter Gabriel in my collection. So then they went to a whatnot purchase that if I had probably, it's by REM. So I'm going to get my notes. It's Reckoning by REM from 1984. And let me see. You know, it's alternative rock, indie rock, jangle pop. Uh, probably if I had really been paying attention, I might not have bid on this because the little damage to this top corner here. So this uh, this album is pretty. Our album cover is pretty well shot. I can't, I can't, re I personally can't grade that over good <laughs> because of that. You know, and so uh, it was like maybe somebody had a dog and the dog was chewing on it. You know, the uh, insert was in really, really good shape. This was the second studio album by the American Alternative Band, Alternative Rock Band. It was released at critical acclaim and reached number 27 in the United States, where it was certified gold in 1991. It peaked at number 91 in the UK. 12 items in, I have also have 12 items in my collection beside this by REM. So that should tell you that I do like REM music and that's probably what led me to this purchase because I knew I didn't have it. Okay. Now let's take a look at the album itself. Any REM people out there? It's on the IRS label. You know, the the album itself is in really good shape. No paper scuffs, nothing. So that makes up for it. And since I don't, I'm not a collector that collects for the purposes of value. Uh, I guess that uh, the quality of this album, it's the vinyl, makes up for that cover. And so that was REM's. Reckoning from 1984. Well, now it's time to get into the CDs. Okay. And the first one that I listened to was Dire Straits CD from 1988, Money for Nothing. Get that back window's reflection there. That helps it a little bit better, don't it? Okay, so I got them. 
this is a greatest hits or a compilation album and this is really good this is really good you know i enjoyed this so much i was sitting there in in, in a <clears throat> it's hot this uh, highlights from their first five albums uh, the first track on it the sultan of swing was the group's first hit single and was re-released re-released in the uk in 1988 to promote the album but what great music sultans of swing down by the waterline you know and then at, at the end the two song private investigations and telegraph road live remix were really really good it you know the instrumentation in that was good. And then Money for Nothing and Brother in Arms to have ended off here. Tunnel of Love. Wow. Dire Straits. Mark Knopfler and his best and Dire Straits and some of these songs, especially those ones I talked about at the end, the last three or four, really showed to me anyway what Dire Straits was all about. I mean, the, the quality of their stuff. All right, got a little bit, little book in here, like all CDs do. Oh, and it feels like it, oh, it's not a fold out. This lyrics. We got the track listing. Then we got some lyrics. More lyrics. There. And as usual, the printing on these. CD ones are very, very small. Uh, so I'm glad I got to listen to this again. Money for Nothing, <clears throat> 1988. <clears throat> Greatest hits album by Dire Straits. Good stuff. Next, <clears throat> staying with the compilation, that uh, theme that we've got going here is the <clears throat> Elton John's Greatest Hits, Volume 3, 1978 to 1987. So just classified pop rock and classic rock. 12 songs on here. I must admit, I must admit though, I'm a, I'm a bigger Elton John fan of his uh, newest, uh, oldest materials. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, but this one, is, you know, when it starts off, I guess that's why they call it the blues. The Mama Can't Buy Me a Little Genie. Sad Song Say So Much. You know, Empty Garden, uh, Too Low for Zero. Kiss the Bride, Blue Eyes, Nikita. Some good music on here, folks. You know, you know I. Uh, but I just, I like the other stuff better. I do have a a, 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 a four disc CD box set. Belton John has got a lot of his uh, old stuff on it. But that's not. We're not here talking about that today, are we? We're talking about this CD. Yes, I did enjoy it. <clears throat> Elton John, good compilation. <clears throat> would I play it again? Yes, I would. Even though it's not my favorite Elton John stuff. Then we got a pull-out folder. So, good time listening to that. Elton John's Greatest Hits, Volume 3, 1976, was it, did I say? Uh, 78 to 87. Well, it was time then this morning to finish up the music for this week. People ask me, well, somebody asked me, are you going to be doing a, a live one today? No, the live one is going to be the last, from now on, it's going to be the last. I can't get the phone to shut up again. The, uh, the last one of the month it's the last hopefully the last day of the month and it'll be the, that'll cover the last week of music listened to this month plus it'll cover the songs that the songs that i picked that i liked each week i'll do a recap like i just did recently on the, 
on the last one. So the last one is, uh, I guess we stayed with the compilation again. I must have been back in the days when I was just trying to fill my collection up with great songs. And this is The Greatest Hits by Seals and Cross. Now, if you're looking for a duet with some really neat harmonies in it, you couldn't go wrong by checking this one out. If you've never listened to Seals and Cross, check them on your streaming service. <clears throat> I think you'll, if you like that type of music, you'll enjoy them. <clears throat> this came out in 1975. It reached number 10 in Canada and number 11 on the U.S. Billboard charts. It has one new recording of a new recording of When I Met Them. The first version appeared in the, on another album. The other songs were the same version released in their previous four albums. As you can see by the cover here, in my old days I used to put these stickers on them so I knew where to find them. Uh, that detracts from the value. And also I got, there's a piece of tape over here and, and it's on the back too. So I must have for some reason had to tape this closed. I don't know why I would have had to done that. But who knows? And then on the back, we've got some ring wear. And people know where ring wear comes from, either pulling them in and out. And I didn't have them in protective sleeves in those days, pulling them in and out. Or if they're stored too tightly together with other albums, that causes it also. But I enjoyed this one, folks. What did, uh, what did we do for uh, songs on this one? Okay, Diamond Girl. Everybody remember that? Diamond Girl, Hummingbird, uh, <clears throat> I'll Play For You, Ruby Jean and Billy, Billy Lee, Summer Breeze, and we, never may, we May Never Pass Away Again, Pay This This Way Again. Ten really good songs by two harmonizing men. And then we got this sleeve inner, and we have another inner printed ly lyrics, which is... In pretty guard shape considering this is now let's see 25 49 years old and then it was on the uh, Warner Brothers record table and as you can see it's on, that, it's on this side that I'm looking at it in the back, looking at it in the front. There's one little scratch on that front side, but it's not a feeler. Can't feel it. I don't even know if you could see it. It's right at the end. It's on the first track, right at the beginning. But it might come off. But it's in really, really good shape. So. That was this week's The Music. Did you enjoy this? I hope you did. And I hope that you put some comments down there. Let me know uh, if you have any of these albums. Do you like any of these singers that sang or the groups? And uh, just let me know. I'll get back with you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you stopping by. Take care of yourselves out there. Be kind to each other and stay safe.